I've had a few viewers of the channel recently ask me why the last few videos that I've made, why am I running the Xmonad tiling window manager when a couple of weeks ago, all my videos, you guys saw me, I was running Qtile as my tiling window manager. And these people want to know what made me go back to Xmonad. Well, I always go back to Xmonad. I always hop to something and then come back to Xmonad. I've been doing this for about 10 years with Xmonad. I keep coming back to it. Why? It's because Xmonad is simply the best. You know, it's like that, that uh, 80s song from Tina Turner. <laughs> You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. That's Xmonad, right? It's simply the best. That's why I keep coming back to it. It's just comfy. You know, I'll go away for a few weeks or a few months and play with another tiling window manager. But always, when I come back, it's like coming back home. And since coming back to Xmonad here in the last couple of weeks, I've really been overhauling my config file for Xmonad. I've really, I've added some stuff, but I've also removed a lot of stuff. My old Xmonad config was well over a thousand lines long at one point, and it really got kind of unwieldy, unmanageable, mainly because it contained a ton of extra modules that really nobody would ever use. I didn't use half the stuff in the config. I mainly had that gigantic config mainly just for documentation purposes because I know a lot of you guys go and grab my configs and, and you kind of treat it as almost like the Xmonad documentation. So I tried to put as much stuff in that config as possible, but now I'm starting to trim some of the fat. And let me show you a little bit of what I've got going on with Xmonad these days. So this is my current Xmonad desktop. I do have a conky on the desktop. People have asked about the conky here in the last couple of weeks. I keep that conky. I've got some of uh, the key bindings for Xmonad in the conky is because eventually I want to create that uh, deployment script for my Xmonad desktop and for new users they're going to need to know what some of the default key bindings are so that's why I have that stuff there let me open up my xmonad config so let me uh, launch doom emacs here and let me go and get into my xmonad uh, literate config here this is an org document and the first major change that you guys would notice with my config if you've been using it for a while is in the auto start hook I've changed a few things around for one thing I had been using Nitrogen to set my wallpaper. I still love Nitrogen as a program, but I have since commented that line out that uses Nitrogen because eventually if I do a deployment script, I want to have as few dependencies as possible for that thing. And I don't want you guys to have to install Nitrogen to set a wallpaper when everyone already has FEH, Fay installed to set a wallpaper. So we're just going to set a wallpaper with Fay. So now in my auto start hook here, I have spawn once and then we're going to run dot Fay BG, which is the last background you saved using the Fay command. And, and how I'm going to do this is I know people still want a wallpaper browser, which Nitrogen was a wallpaper browser because you could actually open Nitrogen and get a nice grid layout of all your your wallpapers and that was really nice but I don't really need nitrogen for that we can just use our image viewer and what I've done is I've set up SXIV which is a uh, really minimal image viewer I, I've set that up to where I have a hotkey for that I set that to mod F1 and mod F1 now launches SXIV our image viewer and it actually lists out in this thumbnail view all the wallpapers in my wallpaper directory and I could navigate to a wallpaper that I want to set maybe this one right here this looks like a nice wallpaper and within SXIV if I did the following key chord control X followed by W it'll actually set that wallpaper that we had selected let me switch to a different workspace and you can see it actually selected that wallpaper uh, we get a little notification here letting us know that we set that new wallpaper so let me go back into SXIV and if I navigate back to I don't know another wallpaper let me find a, another nice wallpaper here's uh, the one I was using before let me do control X W and it sets that wallpaper back to what we were using previously pretty cool right so that is Faye and that is SXIV our image viewer remember if those of you that grab my config mod F1 gets you the wallpapers listed here in SXIV I also set a key binding for mod key plus F2 what that does let me get to an empty workspace mod F2 
will pick a random wallpaper from my wallpaper directory and set it. So mod F2, mod F2, mod F2. Really cool, right? A really neat little feature. So I'm, I'm adding that and I'm taking away nitrogen from, from my config. I'm going to leave the nitrogen auto start command in my config. It'll just be commented out for those that need it. They can go grab it. For those of you that don't need it, just leave it commented out or you can just delete it completely from the config. And of course, right now I've got Faye. Always when we log into Xmonad, it'll set the wallpaper we last saved. But if you wanted to always get a random wallpaper every time you log into xmonad i've got this line commented out you could just uncomment that line and then of course comment out that line and you get a random wallpaper every time you log in now one thing i did is i got rid of more than half of the config was a module called tree select there was a tree select menu that was part of my old config let me go into my gitlab and show you the old config a little bit but it was this massive config and here's the tree select portion of the config it starts here and it goes all the way there's tree select key bindings tree select configuration and themes yeah, it was about, I don't know, three, four hundred, five hundred lines of just the tree select module. So I got rid of the tree select stuff because it was a neat little menu. But to be honest, would anybody use it? No, it was kind of complicated to add and remove items from the tree select menu. And also it wasn't searchable. It wasn't like a D menu where you could just start typing something and search through the menu. You actually had to navigate through a menu. It's like navigating through bookmarks in a browser, which for people that are using tiling window managers, everything is keyboard driven. It really didn't make sense to have so much of that config dedicated to that tree select menu that I don't think anybody would have ever used. So I deleted all of the tree select stuff. I did leave the grid select menus here because they don't take up much of the config. And I guess some people will find a use for uh, the grid select. Let me show you grid select here. So if I did control G followed by G. That is a grid select menu where I could pick a program here. I don't know, PC Man FM, and I could launch it. So that is the grid select. I left that there because, again, it's not really taking up much room in my config. I don't ever use it, but I, I could see people maybe finding a use for that. Another large chunk that I removed from my config had to do with the Xmonad prompts. So before... I had these really cool prompts. They were like D menu prompts, but they didn't use D menu. These were actually built in Xmonad prompts. And if I go back to my old config, uh, DTXP config here, that is the Xmonad prompt config. So this is, was the theme for my Xmonad configs or the prompt configs. And these were the prompts themselves, some custom prompts that I kind of found on the internet and kind of hacked in such a way to use them. Uh, the search prompt. Anyway, it was a lot of lines of my config dedicated to those Xmonad prompts. And while they were really neat, they really did not do anything that DMenu couldn't do. And, and quite frankly, DMenu does it better. DMenu is much more versatile because the Xmonad prompts are actually built into Xmonad. They're not a standalone program. So it's not like where DMenu, you can write a simple shell script and just pipe it into DMenu, boom, you're done. No, that's not the way the Xmonad prompts work. These things are part of Xmonad. You have to write them in Haskell. They have to be in your Xmonad config. And while it's really neat, especially for those that want to learn Haskell and hack on Haskell, for just most desktop Linux users, you're going to be much, much better served just using DMenu for all your prompts. So I got rid of the Xmonad prompts. We're just going to use DMenu. And in my configs, I have uh, my DM scripts installed. So if I do super P mod P followed by E, that is my edit config DMenu script. If I do super P followed by I, this is my uh, scrot. Uh, D menu script where I can take a screenshot of each monitor or, or the full screen or whatever it is I want to do. I've got super PK for my kill script. So this is showing me all the processes that are running and I could pick one and kill it. Super PM for man page. This is a man page D menu. I could search for a specific man page or I could get a random man page. So I could get that random man page there. And of course, it'll open it in a terminal if I wanted to read it. I don't care to read that man page. I also had super PO for 
open my cute browser bookmarks because you typically you do O and cute browser to pull up your bookmark. So I did super P O for the cute browser bookmark history and recent file menu here. And I also have super P S for the D menu search script. Another thing I've spent some time working on in the last couple of days are the scratch pads. So the scratch pad feature in my old Xmonad config was broken a little bit because I had changed terminal emulators somewhere along the way. And uh, Alacrity has different flags than Xterm and URXVT. And you really need to make sure that whatever terminal emulator you're using with the named scratch pads inside Xmonad, you have to be able to set a title for them. And in Alacrity, you set a title with the T flag. So I've set a terminal scratch pad with the command my terminal, which is alacrity uh, dash T scratch pad. So I'm naming it as a scratch pad and I have this key binded. My terminal scratch pad will be key binded to control S T. And that is the scratch pad terminal. And I could do something like I could run H top right now. So there is H top. I could do control S T to toggle the scratch pad to go away. Scratch pad is still there though. HTOP is still running on that scratch pad. It's just hidden. If I wanted to bring it back, control S T again would bring that back. Let me quit out of that. If I wanted to actually kill the scratch pad, I'd just close it like I'd close any other window. I also have a scratch pad for MOC, which is a terminal music player. So if I did uh, control S M, that is MOC. Let me close that. I also created a scratch pad for my calculator, which is calculate GTK. So I set that, I believe, to control S C for calculator. And it's a little smaller because I didn't want the calculator buttons to be all big and, and look all wonky. So I set that to an appropriate width. But again, if I did control S C, the calculator hides control S C, the calculator comes back. And then, of course, super shift C will actually just close that. The way the name scratch pad feature works is it creates a workspace. There's actually I have nine workspaces, but there's actually a tenth one called NSP for named scratch pads. It is hidden. Uh, it's hidden from the X Mobar output, but it's there. You don't have a key binding. You can't go visit the NSP scratch pad workspace, but that is where all of your scratch pad windows, when you toggled them to be hidden, they actually go to that hidden workspace. When you toggle them to show, it actually brings those windows to your current workspace. So that's the way the named scratch pad feature works. And I say you can't go visit that named scratch pad workspace. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could go down to where I've set my uh, workspace names. And here it is, workspaces. What I could do if I really wanted to see that named scratch pad uh, workspace, I think I could just do, I could just add it on to, to everything here. And again, it's NSP. I believe it's NSP all caps is what it is, but I, I don't know why you would ever want to see that workspace. So <laughs> by, the, by default, it doesn't show and I would just leave it that way. Another thing I've been doing is I've been playing with my layouts a little bit. I've got a lot of layouts in my Xmonad config just for examples. And I've been trying to clean them up a little bit and working on them. I've also added a couple of new layouts. I found this really neat layout in the Xmonad-Contrib libraries. It was called Accordion. And what the Accordion layout is, let me go to a different workspace. I'm going to open up, we'll open up four terminals. And then if I do super tab, I'll cycle through some of my layouts. Let me get to accordion. There is accordion. This one I'm calling tall accordion, but this is the standard accordion layout. Say I'm on the uh, first window there, but I can go down the stack and, you know, then the middle one pops out and then that one pops out and then the bottom one pops out. Kind of neat. I, I, like I could see that being a useful layout for a lot of people. So that's why I did that one. And if I do super tab to go to the next layout, I do have instead of tall accordion, we have wide accordion, which is accordion, but you know, in a horizontal kind of layout rather than a vertical layout, but it still works basically the same way. And adding the accordion layout was pretty simple. You see, for tall accordion, I just set that to be the standard accordion layout. For wide accordion, you need to run the uh, mirror command, so mirror accordion. 
And you can do that with any uh, layout mirror and then name of layout. All it does, it, it kind of turns it on its side. <laughs> That's what it does. I've also spent some time with the uh, window rules. So your manage hook here and Xmonad has pretty good defaults. Even if you don't specify these things and Xmonad's default config, it knows every confirm box should be floated. Every uh, error window should be floated. Every download window should be floated. But I wanted to specify them just in case I also wanted to add some other stuff like I always like GIMP to be floated so I set a, a rule here for class name GIMP do float uh, GIMP with a capital G is the class name if you're ever unsure about a class name or uh, anything like that the xprop tool is what you need to do so let me launch GIMP I have two rules for GIMP I have GIMP needs to be floated and also down here I have GIMP also needs to be shifted to my workspace 8. My workspace 8 is really 9 because you start counting at 0 in programming, right? <laughs> the numbering starts at 0. So we're going to send GIMP to the ninth workspace, which I called graphics. So let me launch GIMP with D menu. And GIMP launched, but it is on Workspace 9. It automatically takes us to Workspace 9, too, along with GIMP. So that's really cool. You can tell it's floated because it's not taking up 100% of the screen. And again, if you were ever unsure about the class name, a title name of a program, you could do xprop in the terminal. And then with this little X cursor, click on the window that you want to get the name from. And you can see window class is GIMP, capital G. Or I could have also used a uh, name here as good new image manipulation program. That's a little longer. So the window manager class in Xmonad's rules class name is actually what the window manager class is in the Xprop. And what they're calling title would be what Xprop was calling window manager name here. So if you were going to use that, you would need to use good new image manipulation program. So. Let me close that out and get back to the config. And most of the other stuff that I've worked on in the config is adding some key bindings, cleaning up some of the key bindings. I got a lot of key bindings now. I got key bindings for everything. And it could be a little confusing for people that grab my configs. But again, that's kind of why I added the conky for some of the basic stuff. But obviously, if you want to know all the key bindings, you just need to pull up the config file and read it. I added a lot of key bindings for Emacs because I really want to replace a lot of my default programs with Emacs. So for me, control E followed by another key launches various Emacs programs. So control E followed by E just launches Emacs. There's the Emacs uh, dashboard there. Now, if I wanted to launch some other programs, I could, for example, I have hotkeyed control E followed by V launches the V term in Emacs. So if I wanted my terminal emulator to be an Emacs buffer, I could just use V term. It works just like any other standard terminal emulator. If I wanted to play with the E shell, I have that bounded to Control E followed by S for shell. There's the E shell. And you see the E shell and V term both actually run my random color scripts command. So <laughs> I've added a color script space random to the uh, bash RC, the fish RC, and the ZSH RC, which VTerm uses standard shells. The E shell has its own profile, its own RC file, if you will, and I've added color script random to run in the E shell as well. A couple of other things I have binded I have Deer Ed for my file manager if I want a Deer Ed open, and of course, I want sometimes I want to use the uh, Emacs web browser, EWW, so I have that bounded as well, so I can launch. DistroTube.com, for example, inside EWW. So that's a little bit of, of what I've done with my Xmonad config. I've still got all those terminals open over on this workspace here uh, in that accordion layout. Let me change that to master and stack. In the master and stack and most of the other layouts, except floating and except accordion, because it doesn't make sense in floating or accordion layouts to be able to do this. But in all the other layouts like master and stack and grid, uh, you can do sub layouts with tabs. So if I wanted to force some of these windows to be grouped into tabs, I, I can actually merge them all with this particular key binding. I just merged all four of those windows into a tabbed layout and now I can navigate between the tab layouts. If I wanted to unmerge them all, I could get them back in the standard master and stack layout. So that's a little bit of the sub layout tabbed feature that I've got in most of the layouts. 
Anyway, that's enough of me playing with Xmonad for one day. I, I could talk all day about Xmonad. It's really one of the things I'm really passionate about. Uh, I'm passionate about a lot of things as far as free and open source software. But every time I dive into my Xmonad config, it just makes me small because you know, I go read the Haskell documentation. I'm always discovering new stuff with it. Every time I decide to sit down and, and hack on my Xmonad config, I discover something that I didn't know about before, and that's what makes it really, really cool. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I'm talking about Absy, Dallas, Gabe, Lou, Mitchell, Alan, Akami, Archie, 30, Chuck, David, the other, David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Polytech, Scott, Steven, Smin, Wes, and Willie. These guys, they're the producers of this episode. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. Uh, this quick look at my latest Xmonad would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen. Screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. I don't have corporate sponsors, I just have you guys. So if you want to help me out, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace. You're simply the best, better than all the rest, better than anyone.